Hello everyone, wherever you are, glad you're here. I'm not a critic and today we are investigating a mystery in 1982's Blade Runner. Let's get into it. The film opens up with information about this universe. With the advancements in cybernetics, the Tyrell Corporation has manufactured replicants to help aid in off-planet exploration. When a group of model Nexus 6 replicants commit mutiny in Mars, they become illegal on Earth. Special squads of police officers known as Blade Runners are tasked with the retirement of any replicant that seeks asylum on Earth. The year is 2019 in Los Angeles. Leon Kowalski, who was Brian James in real life, is an individual that is under investigation at the LAPD headquarters. He is suspected of being a replicant. A void comp test will reveal its true nature. It wouldn't take long for things to go wrong. Officer Holden, who is Morgan Paul, is administering the test and is shot point blank. The chase for the Nexus 6 is on. Detective Decker, portrayed by Harrison Ford, is found ordering a meal in Little Tokyo. He is minding his business when two officers bring him back to headquarters. They ask him to come out of retirement and become lead Blade Runner. His mission would be to track down four replicants that came from the Marsh Colony and retire them. After a quick briefing on the background of the replicants, he is off to find more information at the Tyrell Corporation. The beautiful Sean Young is playing Rachel and is a unique individual in this futuristic world. A brief introduction between Deckard and Dr. Eldon Tyrell, who is a talented Joel Trickle in real life, would boil down to a void contest administered to Rachel. Emotions will begin to build when it is determined that Rachel is a very advanced replicant, giving Detective Deckard a new appreciation to the Nexus 6. 25 minutes into the film, we the audience are introduced to the leader of the escape group, Roy Batty, who is Rutger Hauer. Fun fact, when Hauer met Ridley Scott, he already dyed his hair. He was extremely dedicated and it showed. Now, Batty is with Leon and they are in the search for answer. Their question is how to live past the four year lifespan given to them by Tyrell. A visit to the talented James Hong who is portraying Hannibal Chu, an employee of Tyrell who works on genetic design specializing on the eyes. This encounter would lead them to J.F. Sebastian who is William Sanderson, another employee of the corporation that could lead Roy to Tyrell. The third replicant of the film is introduced. Its name is Pris. Its attitude is that of a timid and explorative child. She befriends J.F. Sebastian and is introduced to his robotic friends. Being a genetic engineer, Sebastian is not afraid of Pris. Detective Deckard is following a lead. He discovers what seems to be the scale of a synthetic snake. It's unusual and very expensive. This discovery would direct him to the fourth replicant, who is undercover as a performer. Things heat up as it catches on to what he is, a blade runner. It runs, but not far. A couple of bullets, and it is down for good. This scene becomes a turning point for both sides. The stakes are rising, and time is running out. Leon would ambush Detective Deckard in an alleyway. After an intense line of questioning and a brutal beatdown, Rachel would save the day with a bullet to Leon's head. She is a fugitive since she deserted her post at the Tyrell Corporation. This becomes a weird situation for both parties, but mutual respect keeps things neutral. After some drinks, emotions begin to heat up between the two. Deckard kisses her, pushing his emotions to a place he has never been before. The film connects us back to Roy Batty and Pris with J.F. Sebastian. It is inevitable that without some intervention, the replicants will perish. The time for action is now, and so J.F. Sebastian and Roy visit Tyrell for some answers. It would become clear that death is inevitable at any level, so Roy takes the life of the individual that created him, shifting the film into the final stretch. Deckard is now face to face with Pris. It does the best to hide, but when the opportunity presents itself, it strikes with force. The upper hand will favor the detective in the end. He fires his gun and it releases a horrible screech. The final Nessus 6 arrives to find the remains of what it loves. Roy is left with nothing. Revenge is all that's left. A game of cat and mouse begins. Roy strips down to its underwear and howls like a wolf in search of its prey. Its pupils become manic and its demeanor of that of a psychopath. When we see Deckard, he is in a state of panic. Fear is felt strongly. All he wants to do is escape the situation. In a twist, Roy saves Detective Deckard from the ledge, and confusion is expressed. In a short monologue, the replicant expresses its experiences. The darkness of its world is shrouded with pain and fear. It was created to serve, but instead develop love for another. Freedom is all that it wanted, a better life to obtain what every human has and might at time take for granted. The view changes to Detective Deckard's apartment. Rachel and Deckard know that their relationship is taboo. Their path is not normal and will be forever different. But amongst the chaos, they both have each other. The film ends, and we the audience are left to think. 
Thank you everyone for watching another episode. This is not a critic. Mad love.